waves must be small. All right, hello, welcome back to Talent Leak. We're in the second game of the evening. Um, I'll be uh, your caster for the rem remainder of the evening, and right now I'll have Renzis joining me. Say hello. Hello. Uh, this your this your first time casting Talent Leak, is that right? That's right. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. I'm actually a bit nervous um, because this is way more professional than I'm used to. Well. Uh... I have some experiences that would say otherwise, but uh, <laughs> let's 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 keep that uh, let's keep that belief for you alive as as long as possible. It'll it'll great better work work ethic. Anyway, uh, we've got second game of today. It's going to be Firebird again. This time the Hungarian roster, the main team, and we've got them playing against Agents of Gozdeb, a Russian team. I'm not sure if they have any of the non-Russian players playing today, but. Uh, they all seem to speak Russian. So, uh, do you know anything about the two teams, or is this completely foreign to you? Uh, I'm mostly in, in the dark from here. Uh, the only thing that I was told about is that Adrian.Gostep is mostly a Russian team, as you said. Um, so I'm quite interested in um, how they're going to play that. Because, in my experience, Russian players are one of the hardest working teams in, in the comp scene. Uh, where we can see more and more uh, of good, of, of some good, and new plays that we don't see that often in Tier Four. Yeah, about Fire Firebird. I actually actually don't know anything about them, but um, uh, looking at the last game of, of the Academy or MPC team from um, Firebird, I'm actually I'm not really sure who could win this. I could I would say that it will be a very interesting match about that. Them being probably stronger than their counterpart. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. You would assume that the main team for Firebird is stronger than the UK team that just played. So you got to consider that Firebird they just went up against a Russian Ukrainian team. They just lost to uh, Blue Jays. So now you've got the main team going up against another Russian team. So oh. curious <laughs> to see how the rematch will go. So Firebird are zero and one right now. We'll see if they can equalize or if they'll be zero two today. Uh, certainly, the org is not hoping for a similar result as we've just had with the two previous very beautiful casters that were able to take game one. But uh, first, I want to point out that we're not going to the same map. We have a different map for today uh, between these two teams. So we're going to Cafe, uh, a Russian map, maybe home advantage, maybe home field advantage, maybe not, who knows. <laughs> Uh, Gozdeb should be starting on the defense. I think they did get the side pick if I remember correctly. So Firebird had OT pick, and they also wanted to start defense. So both teams favoring the defense, clearly. Yeah, about that, that's everything we're going to say. While we're, while we're talking about that, we're going into the game and into the bands. Uh, what do you think about the band? The band? Oh, uh, I could see a Ying. I could see a Flores. Uh, it's the new season. Uh, Brava might get banned. Very new operator. Quite strong, I think. I don't think she's OP, but she does have her merits. But no, we, we start with the Flores. So my initial claims were right. What do you think the second attacker ban will be, though? Bro, I, I will be honest. I'm, I'm fully with you with the Brava ban. Because um, you don't have that much time to adjust with it. Oh, no, and it's a knock. Very usual on Cafe. We often see yeah. a fucking knock. You don't want to knock just come behind you on the fucking white stairs uh, in... In just like a clutch, clutch situation or stuff like that. Yeah. All right. And no kind of army. I, this is a fairly standard ban at the moment. I think the meta really favors taking out both of these operators. Azami, of course, a uh, uh, an operator like Mira that completely remodel how you play the game on defense. And Nook just being an operator that seems to elude all kinds of intel, which is very important on this map as we have, you know, a lot of information game. And the last ban from AOG seems to be... Well, my so well, my off the board. It's a band that I've seen a few more times now on Cafe, over other maps, and people like taking it out so that they can burn more effectively. And usually, when an Azami is in play, so I'm I am confused 
as to why the Wamai ban comes out despite Azami already being off the board. That is going to make utility on the defender side a lot weaker. And I, I think we'll see some attacker play around that. Mm, yeah, around that, I think... I think we're gonna see a very interesting match with that. Uh, with very interesting lineup. Um, we don't see Maestro that often being picked in a new meta. Um, since, um, since like the utility meta is really out of touch today. Um, but it's quite interesting to see how it's gonna play here. Um, because we don't really gonna know how, how they're gonna use it. Are they gonna use it more now? Uh, on a more extended, on an extended side or just played on side. Hmm. I don't see a shield on Pixel. Is that right? No, I think that's only Barbar. I don't think they're they fully reinforced bathroom as well. That's so unusual. We can, yeah, so AOG start by fully reinforcing. I think that's all four walls over on stock and bathroom side. So they're not choosing to extend into piano at all. They're conceding that control to Firebird early on. The question is. Do Firebird take that space, or do they approach from a different side? At the moment, it's looking like Firebird is just going to the roof, so most likely they do uh, want to start taking piano control. And so the Kide is going to play to deny that wall, to keep the walls closed, both on bathroom so that you cannot get pixel control, and also stock so that you can't open long sidelines all the way through to top white. And I think this is going to be the plan for, uh, for the agents. They're just going to try and deny the long sidelines for the attackers, which makes it harder to get... Uh, any type of top floor control, which means you kind of just have to dry push in the late round into bar. And uh, agents, of course, that are set up for that because they do have the maestro cams on site. There's two ways to play the maestro. Like you said, you can play it extended or you can play it for the site to deny the plant in late round and to deny utility. And it seems like AOG are going for that. Uh, I think that's a very, it's a very dangerous way to defend uh, the top floor as you have to really rely on the C4's hitting and uh, the... Um... Maestro camps not being taken out too early, um, but if it works, it will work. Um, if not, not uh, we're gonna see that in the in the in the next about one one minute thirty. Um, but while we're talking about that, Ayanas are entering in the the piano area, and I don't think they really um, know about piano not being really, really being contested at all. Uh, yeah, I, it doesn't seem like uh, the guys from um, the Russian guys, you know, uh, know that they're being contested on piano, but they don't have to at the moment. Oh, but this is this is dangerous. All right, so we've got a push from the Anna up onto Pixel, but the entire wall is closed. So this Jaeger has a good advantage, swinging Pixel from oh. bathroom. He's gonna play around it. He is getting challenged. He now has two players to deal with on Pixel, and I think all four players in the at the moment. There's four players inside of Yo. piano, but a nade kill from Firebird. They get one. Yuno gets another. It's a 2v5, and they've recovered the player that was down on the floor, I believe. So it's only Tails from the bot. And it's the Warden that's still playing inside of Freezer, and he still has a lot of control. There's only 30 seconds left on the board, so uh, Firebird needs to shape up to close out this attack here, otherwise this Maestro might cut them down. He has a lot of ammo and his gadget to play around. But Yuno cuts him down, and so it's only down to the Warden. A plant is going down as well. well there's one kill from the Warden. The plant is going to successfully come down, and there we go. He gets cut down from the side of shop. So just giving up that piano control, not working out in favor uh, of AOG. They, they concede too much control, and they get naded out of position. And with pure man advantage, Firebird just... They, they just press the issue, and they find the player that they need to in bathroom without getting any of the walls open. Wow, that was a really good uh, um, execution from um, Firebird main side. They really did a great job of just um, getting the top floor control really early. Not really early, but uh, just getting their foots where they have to be. And I think in, in the most cases, they just shot out the enemies. And especially on the... I think one of the most essential kills was decayed on, on the white stairs. The, that guy being pretty easy, easily naded out, or more luckily, I would say. Um, that allowed them to get a very easy entry into into the white into the white um, region of the site um, just get 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 more and more control about that and you don't want you and you don't want you to lose your white control that early with like three or more people rushing that um, on their own 
Yeah, like you pointed out, a good explosive utility from the attackers. Less so from the Kaid, uh, as, as we saw from the round previous. Uh, he did miss a C4 on white window, on that white corridor window that could have maybe connected onto the player repelling there at that point in time. Uh, sadly, it goes too wide, it goes high, it doesn't connect onto the window itself, and so he doesn't have any kill potential with it, and instead he gets naded. So uh, the attacker's having, I think, a uh, better throwing arm at the moment. <laughs> It really looks like that, and at the moment where we're talking about that, the try, try bet seems to be um, forcing bakery completely on their own. But I don't, I don't know about, I don't know about the agents, but they seem to be kind of um, not really. Um, don't feel really seem to feel safe in the bakery area and are not recontesting it. Uh, okay, wait, they have a rotate on bakery, but with that being completely fired off, there's the entry being. Completely taken off, and oh, um, the agents get two early frags on Firebird, but them being out, I think it's both of the entries. That's not what you want to see here. Uh, and now, yeah, um, one more. Oh no! Let's give it up to you for the moment. I this this was a five v three early advantage for the agents. They were able to capitalize off of Firebird just pushing in one by one, but. What are they doing now? They've got an, they've got a Habana. They're able to collapse onto her with two separate players, but the Maestro isn't able to shoot at her, so she finds both the Jaeger and then also singles out the Maestro, putting us back into a 3v3. How does that crossfire not work out for agents? <laughs> they they definitely should have gotten this Habana and cleaned up this round already, but instead it's still a close contest closely contested round and you know gets another one. You know's on fire already in these first two rounds. Just one kill comes his... back from mute. Now another kill from Kaid. It's a 2v1 back to advantage for agents. A very scrappy round from both these teams and oh, beautiful shot. Wow, that was finished off very fairly quickly. Uh, it's one of the guys of agents, one of the agent guys. I don't know what, what, what happened there. He just seemed to just ran into, into, the, uh, into the side of the enemy. Uh, but there was so much going on at the moment. Uh, they just frag out most of them in the in a very fairly quick time. Kind of chaotic from start to finish, in my opinion. Uh, but it just all came down to um, the agents, just mostly just gunning out the Firebird players before they were able to really extend their push uh, into the into the bakery, and they, they didn't even get to go for the vertical control at all. Which just them. I think that was the key who, that lost them the round. Yeah, I think we can see a pattern shaping up already. Um, AOG playing very intricate, interesting setups, and Firebird just trying to use brute force uh, to power through them rather one-dimensionally and using utility to their advantage. And in the first round, it worked out for them because they were able to connect the nade, but in the second round, you could see that Firebird were pushing in one by one, they were getting cut down individually, and. The only reason that the second round here on Kitchen was even close was because Yuno was putting in a lot of work making hero plays all by himself instead of uh, Bakery, which arguably, you know, like I pointed out during the round, shouldn't have really happened. And so AOG could have had a very comfortable round. Instead, it's quite close thanks to the Hibana. But they are still able to close it out. And so now they're going onto the second floor, choosing not to go back to top floor still as uh, uh, Firebird have had a very convincing victory upstairs. So. Being said that that's what that's the thing that uh, I don't really like about um, Bay, um, cafe because it's, it's very boxy and you have like a very limited amount of attacks that you can go for, which is kind of unusual for the, the default theme of Siege, where you have um, just a more uh, unlimited amount of defense, defenses, and attacks that can be played out and all be played out um, completely individually. That's uh, with, yeah, let's come back about the box type. Um, it just doesn't give um, the players or the attackers really the opportunity to get replaced through, through um, the top floor. And what what is happening? Oh. To smoke? I think he's tapped. I think Django's have yeah. He he might have a connection issue. We might lose him in a second here. That would oh, be very yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. Oh, and oh, Geico, Geico makes up for it. <laughs> you know, that's what you want to have. Oh, and they're, try and they're getting the top floor control fairly early. About 1 minute 30 are being wasted already from by AOG. Uh, but it's smoke still in the... Yeah, I don't think he will come back. 
Yeah, so this looks more like a four versus or three versus four situation, and now he's na getting aided out from that position um, either. So it doesn't really matter from that point. Um, and Firebird are just not seeming to get top floor control. Uh, I, don't, I don't, I don't really get it. Wait, are they are they collecting for the? Oh my God! Do you see what I see? Yes, I do see it. I think it's happening. They're quickly going happening? into reading. They're going for a fast execute. They don't know about the player inside of reading, but they cut him down anyway. Django now on the disconnect. It's a 2v4. Big man advantage for Firebird. They now have side control. There's nobody upstairs to try and deny the plant, but Geico just cuts down the player in default plant spot anyway. Immortal comes for the refrag. Hiram gets the last player as well, and Firebird. Wow. All right. The Monty goes down early. They have to change their plants. I think that Monty pick was very huge from Geico, but... Ultimately, Firebird are able to find enough picks upstairs, um, also thanks to Django sadly getting disconnected, that they're able to just rotate around, go for a reading execute, and just, again, brute force, press their man advantage. I think that's something that they're really good on, just going in together and finding trades, finding opening picks, since they're able to just press this advantage every time. Um, so they're able to convert that round by just going straight for sight. A little bit of a mid-round adaptation, it's good. I think it was a really smart play from Firebird to um, play off the, the man advantage that they had there. And they really used it from uh, in, a, in a good advantage. You could see that um, the AOG guys, they were really thrown off by that. And what they were they didn't expect such a rush with four men on just uh, on, on fake and on, on library. And it worked out fairly well. And they, got, they, didn't even, they didn't even try to plan, didn't they? No, they didn't. <laughs> The, there was a player in default plant spot. Uh, I think it was the Yana, so I don't think that was the person that even held the diffuser. I don't know where the diffuser was. They just went to the site and started cutting down the players. They, it's it's a good read. They also had a lot of time, so planting wasn't like a, a time-pressing matter. They could really just sit there and wait for uh, you know AOG to start panicking, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, so Firebird, so far I'm seeing a lot of good things out of their attacks because they're able to find opening picks. And the second round we saw that they can come back from a big man deficit and they can still bring it back with individual talent. And they're able to press their advantage and keep that advantage by just trading themselves into rounds. And uh, so far I'm very convinced with what they have to show. Uh, AOG, a bit shaky on the defense. I hope that they can shape up and do a little better. But first, they need to get Django back because uh, I don't think that playing 4v5 is inherently an advantage. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the AOG guys were really thrown off by the disconnect from the mate, which could really throw off your mentality from the start of the game. And if you don't have the momentum uh, from the start uh, on your side uh, from the beginning, you don't. It's not really the play you wanna or the thing you wanna encounter. And while we're talking about that, uh, we have a we, AOGs. Taking their time out for that, um, and you don't. I don't think you want to do that. Oh, wait, is I don't know. Can they have their time out for that, or is it more of a technical timeout, and they or are they just using it up for for this position? And it doesn't look like it really doesn't look like the mate is coming back, or is he production? Is he coming back? Any info? Oh. Okay, he isn't. So we're gonna continue with the four versus five situation that is not not the ideal position you wanna start in as defense. Wait, they can't? Not at all. Alright, so right now we're waiting on word on what's gonna happen because we're not sure how and when and where Django is going to reconnect because we have a round going on right now, uh, but they are currently 4v5. And uh, in the rules, it's not explicitly stated that you can play as a 4v5. You're not allowed to play one player down. You do need to fill up the server entirely. And so we're, we're not sure what the situation is on the last player. We just need word on that guy. And so in the meantime, I don't know if there's anything that you want to dissect between these two teams. I'm not sure how we will continue from here on, but maybe there's anything you want to talk about since we have some time. I really don't know what happened there in the in the in that sound. You don't wanna you don't want to uh, smoke to just completely disconnect. And now if you said uh, if they don't if, if they are not even allowed to play, uh, I don't know how the rule book states it, but is the round just gonna re be replayed or yeah replayed? Okay, um, yeah. Uh, let's. Uh, okay, okay. 
Um, well, by, wait, well, what would, while we are just waiting here, let's just talk about, uh, what should we talk about? Um, I think there's not really that much flashy play from both sides that we can talk about. It really stood out to me, uh, except the, except the library rush. So I would suggest we talk a little bit about the next games that will be happening after, after this match, to the agent of Gobs uh, and Firebird match. Uh, the next one will be White Tigers oh, yeah. Academy. <laughs> uh, East, yeah. East okay. Wars. I now understand why you want to talk about the other games. You just really <laughs> want to talk about White Tigers. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, <laughs> bro, I'm so hyped about the White Tigers game. Uh, since they are a really big name, I I um think we're gonna see, even though it's the academy team, we're gonna see very good players and. Um, the enemy team will be B Esports, which I have casted yesterday on the EEG channel. Which, uh, and they, the enemy team, which they played against, was Team Solid. I, I, yeah, Team Solid. They completely demolished them with a 7-0 victory on Clubhouse. Uh, and I think that can be probably one of the most interesting matches that we're gonna see today. Not gonna, not what I wanted to say with um, that the other games will be boring, but. Um, they will. I think it's gonna be the, one of the highlights um, coming up to the game five with two guardians who are a very strong team on their own as well um, against MTK Budapest. But I'm not gonna gonna cast that one. I'm gonna cast the next three ones here. Uh, Reaper ends. Okay, All right. Sorry. So yeah. I was no, falling that's, into, into the I was. No, it's fine. <laughs> you went to, you went into solo caster mode. I'm I'm allowing you to take over. We have a lot of dead air to fill at the moment. Because these uh, two teams are encountering some issues with one of the players on AOG having some connection errors. Uh, I It did lead to one kill, essentially, um, the disconnect that happened on AOG. But uh, just quickly, to come back to the game that we have at hand, I think... Uh, I don't know how much the kill would have mattered. Because it was a well-placed nade on a player that was in the middle of disconnecting, but... Uh, Arguably, that player was going to play around top right anyway, and if the nade is cooked well enough, he probably would have died to it anyway. So it's questionable how much of an impact that disconnect would have had on that round specifically, especially with the way, with the way Firebird you know, played the remainder of the round. They lost their Monty early, but they were able to adapt very quickly and just go more aggressive again. I was going to point out during the round that uh, Yuno was 5-1. and one. He had found some very impressive frags that nearly brought back the kitchen round, and then right after that, he goes on to Monty. I am very opposed to players that are top fragging switching to the Monty the following round. It's uh, I, I don't really know if you want to remove the guy or or take away a primary gun from the guy that is getting you the most kills on attack. I, I don't know if that's the play. But uh, I mean, it worked out for them without having to play with Yuno. He went down early and they were still able to convert the round convincingly. So there seems to be enough firepower and Firebird at the moment. They don't seem to struggle with that. So even with losing their top frag on the Monty, they're still able to convert rounds. So uh, I guess I guess my complaint was null. So it's good that I didn't make it. The only reason I'm bringing it up is to you know get some time done. Yeah, I think the switch just shows us thought shows us what what a strong uh, team Firebird actually is. Azami Wamai. Um, yeah, the, the bands were Flores Wamai, Nurk, and Azami. Um, yeah, coming back to the the, the Monty, as you said earlier, uh, I just I just think it's it shows us what a what a uh, good and experienced team Firebird actually is, um, as they can just completely flexible um, switch up their um, their their roster on the the roles on their um, rosters, and and still are about to to perform, and it's I think it's very impressive. Yeah, I mean, having, you know, just because somebody's on a support role doesn't mean he's uh, not capable of getting kills, right? And we definitely saw that with Yuno. He's able to get his frags, and he's able to flex onto the Monty as well, so he can play Monty Hardbreach. I'm sure he can play other ops as well if need be, so uh, very flexible team overall. Um, haven't seen much out of AOG. I think they're just playing, you know, their setups and their strats. I think they have very linear setups at the moment. Uh Sometimes working out for them, sometimes not. Uh, they've struggled with Firebird's level of aggression, not really able to to quench that. Uh, Firebird just dominating them in the server in terms of uh, frags at the moment, finding a lot of openers, and even if they don't get it, they're able to still find refrags and play around that. I forgot, and at the moment we 
it looks like we're having some problems on the on the um, production side. Uh, but uh, with that being said, um, I'm kind of out of words for for the moment, as we haven't seen that much play uh, being being played in the last three rounds that were being played. Um, but I wouldn't heavily favor one of the teams uh, on the side. I would just say um, that it can be. I think it will go to overtime. Actually, uh, as if if um, if the agents goes there, are, are gonna um, get the momentum back. I think they will really um, heavily play around that and get one of one or two of the rounds on the defense as well. Because uh, I mean, um, Cafe on its own is the very defender-sided map. Uh, and you don't, you don't, you don't want to lose uh, to a two-four split in a on the defense. Yeah, I think a three-three is what you're aiming for at least. Uh, I think in the current meta, you know, a lot of maps have become balanced. I think the only one that arguably still is very defender-sided is Theme Park, because even maps like Villa have now swung more to the attacker side. So I think a three-three split is always good on the defense, but especially on a map like Cafe, I think a four-two is probably optimal. Uh, and already two rounds up for, is it? Yeah, it's two rounds up for Firebird. So AOG really have to start getting their momentum back and and getting some of these defender wins. And I mean, they might have an opportunity now. Uh, Firebird did have a bit of momentum uh, running into these attacking rounds, but that's been you know kind of slowed down a little. And AOG maybe have a few moments to you know, up, along with fixing their problems. Uh, just connection problems, uh, also maybe uh, finding their own momentum, really getting into the game, considering what went wrong for a few minutes, and just just maybe when you're not talking about it, even at least just uh, having a few thoughts about it here and there is going to help, and then bringing that right into the next round, the moment we launch. And just staying warm and staying ready, I think, is the big important part for Firebird. They need yeah. to just, they need to be like, okay, what we were doing is working, what we're doing is, is working very, <laughs> very well. We just need to keep doing that. We need to keep staying the the same aggressive way that we are because AOG haven't really found an answer for it yet, except when we get picked apart individually. So we just have to avoid walking in alone and just continue the trades because that's been working and we're good at that. So just keep doing that. Make sure your utility connects, you know, use the Capital Bolts, use the nades. They have banned the Womai. And that was actually the ban of agents. Um, so agents getting naded is quite ironic after they take out the Womai. <laughs> Uh, so for, for AOG, it's just getting in the game in the first place. I, I think they haven't really woken up yet, and that can definitely change even on the attacking half. You know, if they really get into the game, they can, of course, turn it around at any point. It's a game of two halves. But Firebird, just, um, they're they're here. <laughs> they were playing right out the gate, and they just need to continue what they're doing. Yeah, just as you said, uh, I think um, this, this uh, big technical timeout will definitely um, flatten out the, the momentum on both sides. Uh, and just will allow allow AOG to come back into this match uh, completely refreshed and just um, have get, getting them the opportunity to talk about what what went wrong there and get their mentality up again in the game and just just go through their strats one more time, uh, talk a little bit of about what, uh, what what they will do and stuff and they can actually just uh, um, analyze the players of um, of Firebird what they did there. Um, and I think now that they have three rounds of experience in this match, um, they can actually really, really well play around that. And I think that could really favor, swing the favor to AOG at this moment. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right with that. If we go into overtime, uh, which is a, certainly an option between these two teams, you do got to consider as well that uh, FIBE got to, you know, Firebird, they, they were the ones that picked uh the overtime starting side so they do get to start on the defense and so if they continue the attacks the way that they have right now i don't think we're going to overtime i think they will just take it out right but if we are going to ot you know firebird are at least with how this map usually plays out and it, of course it can uh, you know differ on the individual day depending on how these two teams play against each other but for the most part that's that's going to favor firebird so I mean, they're they're not looking for OT. They're of course looking for a regulation victory. That's they 
why would you want to go OT if you can just win at 7-4? Yeah, that's true. Mm, around that, uh, um, almost everyone is in again. We have lobby set up, uh, but I think it will take around one or two more minutes. Let's, uh, well, 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 that's happening. Let's try to analyze a little bit more about the about the bands that are being taken, and let, get it. Try to like get a deeper look into them if if there really was a, a deeper meaning behind these bands. Okay, I don't know who uh, Floros and Wamai. Um, this the band was from from IOG, right? Uh, as, as you said about uh, that uh, with the with the Nate, um, I think it's kind of ironic as you said. Um, but I'm I'm really interested about the Flores band because they didn't seem to use that much um, utility except the Maestro. Uh, so I I couldn't really I, I don't really see I don't really see the, the Flores band except them being very strong on its own. Um, uh, what did you want to say? My bad. No, I was. Uh, so I think I understand the. Uh, I think I understand the Flores ban now, and I. Th I think this was a good counter ban, probably, uh, that worked against AOG. So I think AOG might have taken out the Flores because it's a very much a hard counter to the Azami. And Firebird took out Azami in the process as well <laughs> because. When Flores is off the board, Asami becomes very strong, so you have to take out Asami as well, or you have to deal with her when you're attacking, which is very annoying because you burn through a lot of utility. If she stays alive for even half the round, she has all of her Kiba barriers, and you will have to deal with every single one of them. And she can just keep replacing in one particular spot, which means you burn through a bunch of utility, especially when it's protected by ADSs and Wamai magnets. So instead they take out, you know, the Asami, they take out the Wamai, so you don't have to deal with that as heavily. Wow, Since Flores, okay. I think I think Flores is the king of uh, utility because he has three flashbangs and he has four drones that can destroy pretty much anything. And so if you get rid of him, you have to get rid of, you know, uh, bulletproof utility. So if you're not going to take out Maestro, which isn't really a common ban anymore, he's a much weaker operator in the current meta. He's just not as present anymore. There's no reason to ban him. Uh, Azami holds more value, so take out Azami instead, and then ban a nade operator, which AOG have, you know, nade denial operator, as AOG have done, to make it harder, or to make it harder to protect your utility. Wow, uh, but okay. right now it's backfiring on them. <laughs> the warden ban hasn't, or well, my ban hasn't really worked out for them. No, not at all. But as you said, uh, wow, that's actually a very smart um, uh, evaluation on how you could say that. Uh, that's basically meaning that it was more of a ban checkmate into forcing uh, AOG into banning the Azami on their own uh, as they could uh, uh, just don't want to play, you don't want to play against an Azami on, on, on piano and as we see, they did, could definitely explain why they didn't hold uh, piano at all on their own but while we're talking about that, we're gonna go on um, top floor again um, this time it looks like Mostly, yeah, the same setup with some barbed wire on the under the under the default walk-in, uh, drop-in on on the skylight. Uh, most of the fiber team is just they're just gonna top down. It seems like it. Probably going on the connect some of the windows, uh, going for a quick. Now, now that they know that um, piano is not really played that much, I think they will take oh, um, no. piano way earlier. Oh, and Hannah gets uh, oh, MDMA water. Uh, you don't want to lose your Flores, that, oh, Flores, what am I talking about? Warden, that early. <laughs> uh, as he's especially as important with the flashes. Um, but okay, yeah, uh, it doesn't look like Firebird really has that much utility against um, Warden. That they can play around. So, um, okay, it's actually some, a quite okay pick, by, because it still favors the, 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 the man advantage on side of five Firebirds. Yeah, I mean, finding a player is always important because it's firepower, but Warden isn't necessarily the worst player for you to lose because you need the Master late round, you have two C4s, and you have Doc with three stims. I think losing the Warden is the one that hurts the least here, but of course, giving up early man advantage is not something that you want to do, and Hunan makes it even worse. He takes out uh, the Mute as well, and so now there's one C4 off the board that's gone unused, that's wasted utility on the side of AOG. And of course, they have a heavy man disadvantage now, as there are two players down, and they need to find a pick here somewhere. There's another gunfight taken, and Huno goes down to very low HP inside of trains, but he's still alive. 
And that is going to be very annoying for AOG because they still have to deal with him. Even if he's 1 HP, he can still, you know, do damage. He can still find uh, headshots. He can still connect onto players. And so you, you need to be able to close out that kill inside of trains. They're not able to do it. And so AOG is still fighting from that heavy disadvantage. One minute on the board and Firebird can start ramping up the pressure. Got a player on white repel as well. Hiram now going off of it. Relieving some of that pressure, which allows Doc to push up, but he gets oh. cut down immediately. He gets baited into pushing up onto Pixel, but the Sophia's ready for it. And now Django finally finds a response. That's the opener for AOG. But with 35 seconds on the clock, is it too little too late? He still has a C4. We still have the Maestro on the board. Oh my god. But a player on Heaven Repel as well. A player on Cocktail Repel. We're looking for a Cocktail Execute at the moment. Four players still alive for Firebird. Kuno about a breath away from death. Hiram half HP as well, so... Oh, that's Decent damage done. Oh, it's a perfect opportunity for Mass to get a kill back on this side and and uh, get it to uh, two versus two. But when it was two, but it's not the thing you want to see. And he gets fragged out immediately. And Fiber just close up this round and go to a four-one attack lead. Oh no, what three-one through? <laughs> I'm already uh, uh, around the head uh, and get a, a three-one lead. Oh, and instead that's. Looks more and more like uh, a map that Firebird would take. I mean, not getting ahead of ourselves, but uh, I think you mentioned the 4 for a reason. Huno did get a 4k, so massively just uh, making quick work of AOG, not giving them any breathing space. Django the only one to find any picks in that round. Uh, Tales from the Bot just really getting circled in on. Uh, Firebird closing in on him like vultures, another bird. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with a bird reference for Firebird. So uh, <laughs> it's uh it's impressive to see the firepower out of uh, firebird they're able to just use their guns effectively and aog don't really have a response they're giving them early picks and they're not finding any trades i think aog is playing very individual as you can see with uh you know django finding individual picks he can win his ones but if your teammates aren't winning their ones and you're only playing 1v1s while the opponent, you know, the, the opposing team is playing around trades, you're not going to come out on top ever. Or rarely, at least, as we saw in the one kitchen round. And so kitchen is unlocked. AOG are going back to it. This is the one site that they've won. And they really need to get these next two rounds to at least have a decent defender split. If they lose another round, they give a heavy advantage over to Phoebe going into uh, the second half. Yeah, you really don't want to, uh, especially in the defense, you don't want to just die out immediately. Like in, in, in attack, you can go get away with just two people fragging out as you uh, can just e easily get your entries to get. Uh, if they go, both get two kills, it's al almost uh, one round for you. But in defense, you don't. You have to play around um, and uh, force areas and force the enemies back. And uh, in, in, the best, uh, in, the best in the best opinion, you uh, get one or two um, of the attackers out before they even try uh, to enter the area that you're fighting in. Um, but it, it, at the moment it looks like they're not even... They can't even hold or fall back uh, and get get the important important time out that they needed. And the time that they get out, uh, just not worth trade to be traded with four or three, uh, three or four bodies. Wow, and yeah, that's... About that's... That? That's exactly what we're seeing, yeah. No, there's, there's already complete second floor control from uh, from Firebird. They have made very quick work of the top floor and the second floor. There's no roam presence from Gosdeb. Like you said, they're not really contesting the space. They're not really finding these picks and then falling back. They're not even there. They're not even there to at least shoot a drone or two to waste time and to get rid of some intel. Instead, they're giving up the space for free, and Firebird took it with, like, I think a minute and 50 on the clock. They were on the second floor already. Buck's playing vertical already. He's going to make a lot of holes, which is going to put pressure on anybody that might be looking at going into the site. So AOG have vacated the site itself. They've got a player in Bakery. They've got a player in Whiskey. Hiram gets the opening pick. One kill comes back from MDMA. He finds Hiram on a trade, and there we go. That's the thing that we needed out of Agents. They need to find this trade game. And Django goes down early. He has only used one smoke canister, I believe. But at least he does get traded out, so it's a 4v4. We actually have some even man counts here. Oh, a Maestro Cam going down early, but MDMA, he's swinging off of it, finds a double for himself on the round. A C4 comes out as well, connects onto the player inside Whoa! of Freezer. That's a triple. All right, a beautiful C4. Now a push-up from the Jaeger as well. Immortal finds one, immediately gets traded from Geico. This is the teamwork that we needed to see out of AOG. They're finally playing together. They're playing... <laughs> 
off of uh, the gunfights of MDM4, MDMA, and now it's only down to Huno. He gets C4 down to half HP. He's in a 1v3. He has absolutely no time, and he gets cut down by the mute with the SMG 11. And there we go. That's what we needed. AOG warming up into this game. Finally, we, we have a game on our hands. Two to three. Wow, it was a very clean gunplay on AOG's side. Uh, the, uh, the 3k from Kate was very important as he got most of the most of the enemies in, the, in a very short amount of time, which threw off uh, Firebirds completely, and they couldn't just they couldn't re react to it at all. Um, uh, I, I almost thought the round was over when uh, the smoke was killed, but uh, with this quick 3k from uh, Kate again, um, who, who was it? I think it was Water, right? Um, uh, I yeah. think I think that, that that's the momentum that AOG needs and the mentality, the up mentality that they need to get back into the 3-3 split. And that would be my guess, uh, that this is gonna be a 3-3 split. Um, because I'm very, I would say I'm positive around about uh, AOG being, uh, bringing this back as they are, seem to be a very experienced team. Uh, and just haven't really gotten the foot into the, into the match, which, which just seems to come back around now. Like the little toes, they're twinkling. In, in <laughs> more, more into the game. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's exactly what I've been saying. You know, AOG were playing alone. And here in this last round, you could see that not a single kill uh, that Firebird were able to get went unpunished. Not a single one. Every time Firebird got a kill, it was traded right back from a different player on AOG. And that's exactly what you need to do when you're uh, playing Siege in general. But <laughs> uh, it's, it's important to keep man count and to maintain man count and to get man count that you're trading each other out. Ooh, there's a player playing aggressive bottom garage. I think I saw you react to that, but I don't think there's any info on him and nobody's going on that rappel directly. So I think nothing's going to come from that. Just an early play downstairs. Oh no, there's an impact. He's going to go for yeah, a run out most likely. No way. He he's waiting. I think he's trying to find, uh, I think Martin that's on the rappel over on East side. Oh no, does that he look goes... good for him? Oh. Now he goes at the wrong time. Martin had just oh. repelled a little bit further down and he gets injured as well on the way back. He gets cut down trying to get away. You know, finds him. Ash moving in and finding the Solace. A nice attempt of an aggressive play, but it gets cut down by, by a Firebird. They're just able to find this player. And now you have, you know, just uh, aggressively clearing out the first floor. He's already found the player, but he might be going for a hatch play. I'm not really sure what he's doing around Freezer side. Uh, but now Solace Firebird have man advantage. With the Sodas being out uh, of this game, this makes the whole plan situation a, a whole lot more easier. Um, uh, with and Firebirds really have to uh, start. Uh, no, no, uh, the OG, OG guys really have to get um, ahead of themselves and get the frag back. And it doesn't look like it. They seem to get weak again with um, Mute being fragged out uh, by by Ash. I thought. Um, oh, and the next one on the corner. Oh, and it's millimeters, pixels away. From getting his third kill. Oh, while well, Maestro gets the first entry kill on Firebirds with about one minute left. This is more than enough time. We can just easily um, frag someone out. Wait, wait, is Ayana on site? Ayana is on site. No, no, no. No, okay, no. The, the site is downstairs. The site is downstairs. But they do have top floor control. Wait, there's a there's a flank coming through. MDMA is upstairs. They have a guy in Whitehall. He's now inside a bathroom. I think he went unnoticed. So top floor control has been relinquished by AOG, but they do have a player going for a late flank. And there's 35 seconds left on the clock, but no, he gets cut down by Hiram proning. Wow. There was some, there's some feed holes placed down for Pixel, and he's able to find the kill off of that. So they regain top floor control completely. Tails from the bot, who is already hurt, gets cut down as well from vertical angles. Django finds one, but he has to find three more with 20 seconds on the board. He's trying to find one. There we go. He finds one in 90, but he does have to reload. Not a lot of ammo in the SMG 11, and with no time left on the clock, Immortal was able to clean him up. And there we go. That's Firebird finding a 4-2 split. A very strong attacking half. Wow, that's ex ex exactly... Uh. It's really exaggerating uh, on on AUGs, and they just they're just not able to perform how they want to. And Firebirds is just looking uh, at a stronger team at the moment as they got two entry frags again before even the trades that just did not happen on that end. Uh, and just I don't think that's uh, that's what you want to see here. And are we gonna gonna pause? I think we're gonna. Okay, I just didn't see it. Okay, um, okay with the switch now being. Um, 
in hand, I think it's uh, this can go in a completely different direction if AOG just um, tend to get the first two rounds um, back in their favor. But, uh, I mean, everything is possible from now on if they get it right. Um, but if as you said, um, normally I would say that it's a very defensive side of the map, but if, if you are able to clear the top floor very early, uh, it can... It can um, it just um, swings to the attacker side really quickly. Uh, it, yeah, it just doesn't look. It really does look um, more before before play here. Not really anything to flash except the echo. Uh, I mean, echo is certainly of... yeah, echo certainly a a very present operator for the kitchen side, and it's something that you want to play for uh, downstairs because you can. Waste a lot of time and then deny the plant late round. That's how you win most of the rounds in kitchen. You let them take a lot of time clearing top floor. Then you let them open up freezer. And then they go for a hatch drop late after you've burned all of the smoke canisters on the hatch drop uh, from VIP, which is exactly where the smoke is playing at the moment. And then they have no time to get a plant down and you can just deny with the yokai drones uh, that are pre-placed already to deal with any plant situations. But it looks like AOG is going at a quick pace. There's a... Oh, oh my no. goodness. What a C4 coming out from Martin. He cuts down one player and... Oh, Martin finds another, a headshot. Was that on white repel? I think it was, yeah. And what are we talking about? That AOG is just not getting the foot into the building. It's, it just continues how it was in the defense. And it just seems that uh, Firebirds are just uh, stronger gunners on his end. And it's... Oh, wow. We're talking about that. He's, um, Valkyrie's getting drawn out. Oh, and I think she's getting chased by the buck. He's just trying to get... He just needs to get his entry. If he doesn't get his entry and gets fragged out from that side, it's uh, definitely not the one you want to see because it's, it's almost uh, a minute and 20 seconds being wasted and they're not even on the second floor yet. So uh, the defense from Firebird is very strong and AOG uh, with now two men down is on a very, um, very crucial disadvantage that you just not want to uh, see on an attack, especially on, on, on a map like uh, Cafe. Firebird continuing their aggressive uh, chokehold that they have on AOG, just not giving them any space. And it's, you know, here on attack, it wasn't a matter of AOG not trying to get into the building. It wasn't a matter of them being very slow and methodical. They were trying to get in the building, but Martin was grabbing them by the collar and throwing them right back out the door. He's not allowing them to get into the building, and so he kills two people, wastes a bunch of time, falls back when he needs to, so he doesn't get picked off by Django, not conceding any kills in the process. And so now you have a 5v3, and only now AOG have gotten second floor control. They're now going for the hatch, and this is going to make it oh my God. really strong. Oh no, there's a player inside of trains! <laughs> What is Uno doing there? Want to see. No. He finds another oh. player. He was hiding in there. He finds one, gets traded out, and that that is going to be painful for AOG. It would be fine. You know, they did find the trade, but they were already down two players. And so losing another is not something that you can afford this late into the round. The smoke canisters is coming out. That's just going to be so much denial for the side of Freezer. They also still have the Echo on the board. There's some flashbangs coming through. Tails from the bot is going to try and go for a hatch drop, most likely. Yes, he does. He has flashes on one player, but he is getting echo stunned, and there we oh, go. Man. It is a death wow. chamber inside of Freezer. A mist smoke canister. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to those personally, but he does find the kill with the gun. You don't need the smoke canister to shoot him. All right, oh, Firebird. Man. They they continue just as aggressive as they were on the defense, and it, it works out for them beautifully. Yeah, it just... Oh, man. It, you don't really want to see two of your entry frags being fragged out at the minute before... He, and not even getting any damage done on the enemies. That's not what you want to see at all. Um, and then, and then uh, finishing that up with the... I think the round was over when when Jaeger just got the, the kill on, on, on Django. Uh, which was completely overseen. And I don't think they, they really knew about him. He was overdrawn or something. Or he just... I was able to just... I don't know. Sneak in there. Completely unseen by the enemies. Um, and... With that being with that being done, I, the only opportunity that AOG had was to force a freezer on that end. And uh, you, as you can imagine, uh, in a two versus four situation, it's kind of it's it's very unlikely to uh, get the force push done if you don't have really really flashy players on your team and the enemies and the uh, in the in this case Firebird would uh, do a very um, very uh, crucial mistake. But they are a very strong team. I, I, I didn't doesn't really seem to be like that and they played it out really well um, and really clean.
at the end with the smoke, um, just wasting even more time on the freezer, uh, which just um, with AOG uh, being not e just not being able to really getting the foot in there, getting the momentum back on their side. Yeah, I would have to assume losing two players early just uh, it costs you a lot of you know you don't think about this. Uh, but losing players early on the attack is also painful, not just because they lose their utility and, you know, their firepower. It's not just because they themselves go down and uh, they lose the utility they were carrying around. They also lose the drones. And you have to keep that in mind. If you lose both your entries and they still have drones in pocket very early on, you don't have time and you don't have the resources to drone out trains fully, especially with, you know, time constraints already. You need to start going for vertical plays. And there's like a minute left in the round. You can't be full droning trains. You just don't have the time for it. Oh, Geiko's aggressive. He's trying to go straight for pillar, but gets cut down instead. An aggressive play from AOG, just a, a solo hero play as Django's also went into top red, but not working out for them. Instead, Geico gets cut down, no refrag. 5v4 for Firebird again, they get man advantage. Wow, with, uh, okay, it looks like a very, Firebird with a very extended roam here. Um, and AOG just don't seem to get, get ahead of themselves and just getting out of their head and not waking up at all. You see three of them uh, stacking up on the on the top red and just not getting it. Oh my god, and you see, and there was a prep. Oh, and it barely misses the buck, who I think he was seen by the by the post from below. And they have to get him out um, in the next few seconds or in the, in the next half of a minute. Otherwise, I think he will get very, very um, nerve-wracking in the last 30 seconds. And yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I don't see what's going wrong here. Uh, AOG just they're not getting any foot in the building. They seem very scared and just getting gunned out. And it, it seems that uh, Firebirds are at, at the moment just playing with the food. Oh, wow. Playing with their food too much, maybe. Tales from the bot cuts down Hiram. That's a little bit of man count relinquished back into the favor of AOG. But got a player playing inside of uh, B1, you know, default. You've got that IQ now pushing up. Not really aware of the crossfire that they're walking into. And, you know, cuts him down. I'm, all right, I'm not really sure what that aggressive bar play was. Really no time on the clock for AOG to oh. think about anything that they're doing, and they're getting cut down individually all across the map. And Firebird are on match point already. Oh, <laughs> what was that kill? Firebird are just dominating AOG completely here. They're not like, getting them any room for free, not at all. Every single room that they take is almost uh, every time taken uh, or equalized by one body. Uh, and they're not even getting the refrag, and that's what no, you don't want to see that at all. Not at all. Yeah, the cost for map control for AOG is way too high. We saw a completely different picture when Firebird were on the attack. It was them confidently taking map control and finding a pick in the process, cutting off any uh, you know fallback routes and just being able to punish any overaggression coming through from AOG immediately. But for AOG, they they can't even get in the building. They they're not able to pressure anybody backwards because Firebird only walk backwards after they found everyone they needed to. And so this is, it's looking quite sad for AOG and, uh, you know, the Firebird org happy right now. They might be able to get at least one victory today. <laughs> yeah, that's ex exactly what you want to see. Um, and I think that's the revenge you want to see for your Academy boys. Uh, um, yeah, but... As you said earlier, um, with the man advantage, with the cost being so high, I don't see AOG taking this. Um, due to them being already down like six two, it's just not it's just not really playable anymore. And uh, the first the first point, Firebirds has already saved the first point on that, and and I think we're gonna see more of a. The AOG really has to um, rethink the whole attack from now on and get their things right. Otherwise, this will be. A quick match. I'm very confused about how AOG are playing though, because I've seen the agents have one stellar round on the defense. They've traded everything. They yeah. were able to take control on the defensive side and punish any aggression from Firebird. But there was one round. There was one round where they showed that they're a good team and that they know how to play the trade game and that they know how to, you know, press the advantage and punish Firebird wherever they are. And I've seen none of that throughout any of the remaining rounds. There was only one confident round, but this time might be different. I think MDMA, you know, he found the opening pick. There's some drone info being relayed onto uh, Huno. He's being pushed back uh, down red after he gets droned out. He doesn't want to get punished by anybody shooting him. He's not cut off, so he's able to freely rotate back, but it's still a man advantage for AOG, so it's not a big deal letting him go. 
at least you don't lose anyone and you gain the map control. And this is this is the step by step process that you need to be going through. They're now trying to deal with the shield on Pixel. I don't know if that Con Six did get it. They did get rid of the mirror or the Master Cam. I'm sorry, the mirror window's still up though. And this is a difference that uh, I've seen between AOG and Firebird on their defenses. AOG left the mirror open in the ban phase and they weren't playing her. Mira is a very strong operator on this map. If you're not going to play her, you should ban her. And AOG weren't really doing that. And here's the punishment for it. Yeah, and we see the exact same thing happening about uh, as, as we saw in the last two uh, rounds. AOG is not getting any, any map control done on their own. They just seem to struggle to get a piano here, especially with the, with the mirror window being not being, I think it's punched, yeah, it seems to be punched, but they're not getting any any uh, map control at all uh, with two men down, or with one man down. Oh, and the second one already being down, and it's traded again, 45 seconds on the clock, and AOG really have, they have to step up their game, and that, they have to do that really fast, and now, otherwise, I don't think they will get us back, not at all. Like, look, look how um, split up the team is. Um, I, I don't think what it, what, I think it's just something on the organization side, um, on the leading side. I don't know who the IGL is, but look how split up their team is. It doesn't really look like they are going for some kind of take. They're just all split up. Hiram gets uh, Vince out, and this is a two versus three situation with 30 seconds. This doesn't look good at all. Wait, and well, Water gets one, gets a second one, and this is still winnable. Oh no, and on the road, there's the smoke, or oh, the Mira, uh, and now it's down. One versus four three, seconds. One versus one situation. This swings and oh my god, he gets, gets it. it. No way! Django, he keeps his team in the game. Just about. <laughs> it comes down to a 1v1 effectively as the Hanna's down on the floor. There's like three seconds on the clock when he finds that kill. Knows about the last player in Freezer. And it comes down to, I think that's Water just being able to, to find two huge impactful kills. Uh, I mean, one was an injured player, you know, but finding the other player deep inside of Cocktail before moving up uh, and just... You know, getting traded out, relaying the info that the last player has to be in Freezer. Django keeps it together just about for AOG. You said they have to step it up. Uh, I'm not really sure if you can call this stepping up, but they just about clinch this round. They take it away from Firebird, and despite Firebird's great efforts, you know, they've lost the opening pick, they conceded it, but they were able to keep it a close trade still throughout the rounds, and this is so important. This is something that you didn't see from AOG. When AOG lose a player, it starts cascading. When Firebird lose a player, they immediately slow down and then start recovering. You saw that they lost a player, they slowed down, they fell back, they didn't contest any spaces, they gave AOG some ground, and then they punished them again. They take a 4v4, one of them goes down, immediate trade, 3v3. And that's the thing that I've been missing from AOG, and I'm still kind of missing it, but at least here, in this very close, last few second clutch, you could see a little bit of that. There was a good play by Water, and then there was a refrag from Django, and that's what's still keeping them in this match. But it's so close. They have to do this three more times to get into OT, and even then Firebird get the start on the defender side. Yeah, you don't want to see that. I think uh, Firebird was already on, on the top of the desk uh, celebrating their win, but uh, it was the, I think that's, that, that was just the, uh, the few seconds that they missed. Um, didn't really that they didn't really focus on the game that uh, get AOG back into the game and I think that's uh, that could be the momentum that they get to if they find the entry frag um, early, if they get the entry frag now I think that could be actually um, around for them and them oh as you see as you see this way oh wow Dins gets the entry frag and you see that uh, AOG oh no the refrag from from Firebirds but AOG is getting way more map control way faster and I think they, they got they got their uh, they got a difference right now differences right now. Uh, as you see, uh, water already being on on on, on, on reading, which uh, they were they weren't there at all the last time they were down in the kitchen. They, they took thing I think about one minute more. Yeah, and I think they got a thing right now, and it looks way better, way cleaner from AOG. Yeah, they got the second floor. Got the second floor much faster than last round. They're able to take, uh, you know, a lot of map control by force. They're able to trade their way in. Uh, you know, Huno finds a kill on top floor. He's traded back uh, by water on the second floor, who had already been in position to try and cut him off. He was not able to get back. And that's exactly what you need to see out of AOG. Now, now we're seeing, you know, what I saw out of them on their kitchen defense, but instead on the attacking side. And 
if they have a lot more control, they have a lot more time to drone things out, to get some information on these players, to figure out that there is an echo on the board and they have to deal with him one way or another. Either you got to shoot him or you got to take out his drone so that you can go for a plant early enough. But oh, things go from bad to worse. Hiram, he gets a C4. He still keeps Firebird in this. Firebird, they have the tenacity. They're able to hold on. Every single time they lose a player, they're able to, they're able to bring one back and find one out of absolutely nowhere. And they're keeping it close. 3v3, 40 seconds on the board. AOG are slowly starting to run out of time. The smoke canisters in play already. And there's still the echo cam that is going to be a threat with every passing second. I don't know where this uh, the third one of the... Over oh, there, here's MDMA. And I think they're going... It looks like they're going for a freeze push from now on. Uh, but with the smoke still being in VIP, I think it can be quite hard. But no! Okay, it will not. With a water just fragging out Immortal and getting them their... their uh, their body account back and no they don't with 10 seconds on the clock it becomes way way harder and the plant is going down it looks too oh no 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 they have a fucking they have an echo i don't think they can they can deny this and they got the plant dude. it's a 1v1 hiram has a triple kill he has to find only water water is on one hp and he now has to play the post plant he has to play it very safely there might be info on the site on that echo drone and Hiram is going for a defuse. The question is, does he does he stick this? He's trying to stick it. Fake. He's sticking it. He sticks Whoa. it. He wins it for Firebird and regulation. There's no Pros way he fake. does that. Pros don't fake. Whoa. Water with a great effort to keep his team just in the game for as long as he did, but not able to win the 1v1 as uh, Hiram just has information and he's just able to stick the plant. He, he has the balls. He pulls through. Just uh, don't fake that. If you're going to get on it, stay on it. It's seven seconds and Water misjudges his timing. He gets baited out. What a 1v1. What a way to close this game. Yeah, a great last wow. round, honestly. It was really great. I didn't even expect AOG to come back like this. I just, I just in, my ex uh, in my expectance, with, uh, was Fiber just fragging out one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, and getting this back uh, to back. But it didn't look like this. It's actually very, very funny to get a diffuser uh, down. Um, it just was not... I think it's unfortunate that uh, Ayana just went around there and uh, um, Goyo stuck there, uh, stuck to the diffuse. But I think if if nobody, if you don't hear anybody, why why not stick to it? And pros don't fake, as we said it like three times now. Um, we uh, did just some free diffuse for you and uh, three points. Three points right. for um, Firebirds. Okay, got their win for now. All right, that was, that was a good match between these two teams. Uh, we'll be right back. We'll throw it to a break right now, and then we'll be back with the third match of the day, White Tigers. I got that Academy team. I know that there's a co-caster right here that is really excited for that game. Yeah. And so uh, we'll see you in a few minutes.